8.1 Types of Fire Alarm Initiating Devices A. Automatic Detection Devices Automatic detection devices have sensors which detect heat, smoke, or the flow of water in a fire alarm system. The different types of automatic detection devices are described below. B. Area Smoke Detector A smoke detector is a device that detects visible or invisible particles of combustion. Smoke detectors have been shown to be very effective in reducing fire damage and loss of life. Smoke detectors should be cleaned and maintained every six months only by an 8 to 97 or 8 to 98 certificate of fitness holder. Smoke detectors. C. Elevator lobby smoke detectors. Smoke detectors that when activated will recall elevators automatically to the designated landing. D. Beam detectors are used to protect large areas where area smoke detectors are not practical. This detector consists of a light beam that when broken by any combustible particle will trigger the detector. E. Duct smoke detectors are designed to sample airflow in the HVAC air duct and to detect the presence of particles of combustion. These smoke detectors will upon activation, shut down the system's fan. F. Heat detector a sensor that detects abnormally high temperatures or rate of temperature rise. Heat detectors have been shown to be very effective in reducing fire damage. See booklet for pictures. Heat detector. Heat detectors are available in two general types, rate of rise and fixed temperature. Heat detectors can only be tested by authorized fire alarm technicians. Fire guards should notify their supervisor if they encounter a detector that has become defective or inoperable. A. The rate of rise heat detectors activate the alarm when the room temperature increases at a rapid rate of 12 degree 15 degree Fahrenheit per minute. This type of detector is more sensitive than the fixed temperature detector. The rate of rise heat detector does not have to be replaced after it has been activated. Rate of rise heat detector. B. Fixed temperature heat detectors trigger the alarm when the detector components melt at a preset temperature level. The fixed temperature heat detectors normally require replacement after they have activated an alarm. However, intelligent heat detectors will usually reset themselves. The fixed temperature heat detectors consist of two electrical contacts housed in a protective unit. The contacts are separated by a fusible element. The element melts when the temperature in the room reaches a preset level. This allows the contacts to touch. When the contacts meet the detector activates the fire alarm. Fixed temperature heat detectors. See booklet for picture. Heat detector with protective mechanical guard. See booklet for pictures. Where subject to mechanical damage, a heat detector shall be protected by an approved UL-FM mechanical guard as shown in the picture above. This guard will also make it more difficult for building occupants to tamper with the detectors. Proper preventative MESERNs shall always be taken to protect all fire alarm initiating devices, especially during construction work within the shelter. 8.2 Manual or Pole Station Alarm Initiating Devices All building occupants and employees must be knowledgeable and trained how to manually activate the alarm initiating devices. Generally, these pole stations are installed at several locations on the premises and are usually located near the exits of a building. Activating the pole station is the most effective way to notify building occupants and employees in case of an emergency. There are two types of manual alarm initiating devices. They are called single action and double action stations. A. Single action pole stations, single action stations require only one step to activate the alarm. The cover on these alarm stations serves as a lever. An example of a single action station is shown below. This kind of alarm station is often found indoors, example, in office buildings. When the cover is pulled down, it allows a switch inside to close. This sends the alarm signal. Single action station, see booklet for picture. Activating a single action station, see booklet for diagram. B. Double action pole stations, double action stations require two steps in order to activate the alarm. The user must first break a glass, open a door or lift a cover. 
The user can then gain access to a switch or lever which must then be operated to initiate an alarm. To activate this type of alarm station the cover must be lifted before the lever is pulled. This kind of double action station is often found indoors. Another kind of double action break glass station requires someone to break a small pane of glass with a small metal mallet. At least one extra glass plate is required for each fire alarm box. Extra glass plates must be stored on the premises. Double Action Stations, see booklet for diagram. Activating a double action station, see booklet for diagram. Fire guards must know how to manually operate each alarm station on the premises in case of a fire emergency. Once activated, the fire alarm system cannot be reset at the fire alarm manual pull station only. The alarm must be reset at a main fire alarm control panel, FACP, after the pull station is reset to its normal condition. The alarm may be reset by building personnel only after being instructed to do so by a fire department representative. Once activated, a key may be required to reset the manual pull station. Fire guards should be aware that in some buildings, fire alarm pull stations may exist that have a white stripe across them. Prior to 2008 a manual pull station shall have a white stripe across it which would indicate that such station will send a signal to the central monitoring company. However, since 2008, the requirement of such stripe no longer exists. Any fire alarm system which was designed under the 2008 building code in any occupancy shall transmit a signal to the central monitoring company. Although buildings constructed after 2008 may not have pull boxes with white stripes, it is still important that fire guards are knowledgeable about which manual fire alarm pull stations send a signal to the central station company and which pull stations do not. All fire alarm pull stations installed or relocated after April 1, 1984 should be installed so that the handle is approximately 4 feet from the floor and it is located within 5 feet of the exit doorway opening. Manual stations should never be blocked or obstructed. 83. Carbon monoxide devices. Carbon monoxide alarm, a single or multiple station alarm responsive to carbon monoxide, containing a built-in initiation sensor, notification device, and power supply, battery or electric with battery backup, and is not connected to a system. Most homeless shelters require carbon monoxide alarms. Carbon monoxide detectors. Carbon monoxide detector, a device that is responsive to carbon monoxide and is connected to the fire alarm control panel. Carbon monoxide detectors are required in any building that has fossil, gas and oil, fuel burning equipments. Carbon monoxide detector. A carbon monoxide detector is a device indicating a concentration of carbon monoxide at or above the alarm threshold that could pose a risk to the life safety of the occupants and that requires immediate action. Carbon monoxide detectors shall be installed, tested, and maintained by qualified personnel in accordance with the manufacturer's published instructions. If a carbon monoxide detector is in alarm condition and cannot be reset, this could indicate that carbon monoxide is still in the premises. Until such time that carbon monoxide can be excluded as the source of the alarm, the assumption should be that carbon monoxide is present and appropriate life safety precautions should be followed. 8.4. Sprinkler Water Flow Detector A sprinkler water flow detector is a device which initiates an alarm indicating a flow of water in a sprinkler system. It is designed to signal when water flows through the fire protection system. Water flow detector, see booklet for diagram. 8.5. Audio and visual notification devices. Audio and visual notification devices are fire alarm system components such as bells, horns, speakers, lights, or text displays that provide audible, tactile or visible outputs or any combination thereof. A. Horns. Horn slash strobes. See booklet for pictures. C. Gongs and bells. See booklet for pictures. 86. Communication system. A functioning communication system is required as a part of most fire alarm systems. One way voice communication systems are generally found in homeless shelters. 
One-way voice communication entails the use of a public address system. Some buildings also have a public address system installed which is not part of the approved fire alarm system. Although not approved, the public address system may be used to warn and instruct building occupants in case of a fire emergency. Communication systems that are part of the fire alarm system should only be used for fire and drill related purposes. Two-way voice communication is a form of transmission in which both parties involved have the ability to transmit information. This is useful during an emergency, and allows staff members to report the conditions of a fire emergency from the fire floor back to the fight safety director or coordinator of fire safety and alarm systems in homeless shelters or fire and emergency drill conductor in the lobby at the fire command center. Two-way voice communication uses warden phones that are placed at several locations throughout the building, usually near the exit stairways in the building. 9. Sprinkler System Sprinkler systems are required by law in buildings occupied as homeless shelters. Sprinklers are devices for automatically distributing water on a fire. Sprinkler systems are intended to control the spread of fire. Activation of the sprinkler system shall cause an alarm to be transmitted to an approved central station and will also sound an alarm throughout the shelter. The two different types of sprinklers are automatic sprinkler systems and non-automatic sprinkler systems. In most shelters, the sprinkler system is automatic since shelters are heated. Automatic sprinkler system, consists of a series of pipes at or near the ceiling of each story of a building. The pipes are filled with water or compressed air, and equipped with automatic devices to release water for firefighting. These devices are called sprinkler heads. Automatic sprinkler systems require water flow devices. Non-automatic sprinkler system, under normal conditions the pipes in the non-automatic sprinkler systems are dry. Water is supplied when necessary by pumping water into the system through the fire department connection. Sprinkler heads must never be painted over and must not accumulate dust and debris. Sprinkler heads that have been painted over or have accumulated debris or foreign material must be replaced immediately with a new sprinkler head. If they are not replaced, they will not open at the desired temperature and this will prevent the sprinkler head from functioning properly in a fire emergency. The pictures below show examples of sprinkler heads that have been painted. The coordinator of fire safety and alarm systems or the fire safety director are responsible for ensuring that the inspection, testing, and maintenance of the sprinkler system takes place as required and on schedule. Depending on the type of sprinkler system in the shelter, inspections, testing, and maintenance could occur on a variety of different frequencies. The F-80 or F-58 holder is responsible for verifying that the person who is inspecting, testing, or maintaining the system has the proper C of F and or license and that a written record of their work is kept on the premises. Annually and once every five years sprinkler systems must be tested and maintained by either a master fire suppression piping contractor with an S12C of F, or a person who possesses a master plumber license in addition to an S12C of F. For the full inspection, testing, and maintenance schedule for sprinkler systems, fire guards should reference NFPA 25. It is also highly recommended that fire guards familiarize themselves with the S-12 Certificate of Fitness for Citywide Sprinkler Systems, which can be found on the FDNY website at the web address below. http www.nyc.gov html fdny pdf conf underscore study underscore material slash s underscore one two underscore citywide underscore sbrnkler underscore systems dot pdf 10. Standpipe systems Standpipe systems provide water that firefighters can manually discharge through hoses onto a fire. Water is fed into a piping system. The piping runs vertically and horizontally throughout the building. The pipes running vertically are usually called risers. The risers are usually located in the stairwell enclosures or in the hallways in the building. The piping system supplies water to every floor in the building.